Now what about the limit as x approaches 4 of 1 over square root x minus 1 over 2 divided by x minus 4. So this time, we have a rational function, we have fractions, and we have a square root. So typically, when we have a square root, we would multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. And when we have fractions, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by a common denominator. In this example, we need to do both. You can do it in any order, but personally, I like to get rid of the fractions first. So I'm going to multiply by the common denominator of these two fractions. So that's root x times 2. Or simply, 2 root x. So if we multiply this fraction by 2 root x, we can see that root x will cancel. And so we're going to have the limit as x approaches 4 of 2 on top. And then if we multiply these two fractions, I mean the fraction 1 over 2 with 2 root x, the 2's will cancel, leaving behind root x. And on the bottom, we're just going to write it as x minus 4 times 2 root x. So now at this point, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the numerator. So instead of 2 minus root x, it's going to be 2 plus root x. So on the top, we're going to FOIL. 2 times 2, that's going to be equal to 4. Let's not forget to rewrite the limit expression. And then 2 times root x, that's positive 2 root x. And multiplying those two, this is going to give us negative 2 root x. And root x times root x is simply x, both a negative in front. Now we're not going to change anything on the bottom. We're simply just going to rewrite it exactly the way it was. The two middle terms, 2 uh, root x and negative 2 root x, these cancel. They add up to 0. Now let's write what we have left over. So on the top we have a 4 minus x. On the bottom, nothing changed. So notice that 4 minus x and x minus 4 are very similar. So just by looking at it, you know at this point that we need to take out a negative 1. If we do so, negative x will become positive x. Positive 4 will change to negative 4. Once we get rid of the x minus 4 in the bottom, then we could use direct substitution. So this disappears. That turns into 1. So now we have the limit as x approaches 4 of negative 1 divided by 2 root x times 2 plus the square root of x. So this is going to be negative 1 divided by 2 square root 4 times 2 plus square root 4. Now the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So inside the parentheses we have 2 plus 2. 2 times 2, that's going to be 4. And 2 plus 2 is also 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So the final answer is negative 1 divided by 16. Let's try another problem. Let's look for the limit as x approaches 6 of 1 divided by the square root of x plus 3 minus 1 over 3 divided by x minus 6. So let's try that. Go ahead and take a minute and work on this example. So just like before, we have a fraction with a square root. So I'm going to begin by multiplying the top and the bottom by the common denominator of these two fractions. So that's going to be 3 and the square root of x plus 3. 
So initially, these two will cancel. And that's going to leave behind a limit as x approaches 6. We're going to have a 3 on top. And then these will cancel, leaving behind the square root of x plus 3. And on the bottom, it's just going to be x minus 6 times 3 root x plus 3. Next, let's multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate, which is 3 plus the square root of x plus 3. So on the top, we need to FOIL. 3 times 3, that's going to be 9. And then if we multiply those two, it's going to be positive 3 square root x plus 3. Now let's multiply these two terms. That's going to be negative 3 square root x plus 3. And then the square root of x plus 3 times itself, it's simply x plus 3 with a negative sign in front. On the bottom, we have 3 root x plus 3 times x minus 6 times 3 plus the square root of x plus 3. Now we can cancel these two. Those are going to add up to 0. So we have the limit as x approaches 6. Now let's distribute the negative sign to x plus 3. So we have 9 minus x minus 3 divided by 3 root x plus 3 times x minus 6 times 3 plus the square root of x plus 3. Now in the numerator, let's go ahead and combine like terms. 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. So what we have is 6 minus x divided by everything else. So what do you think we need to do in the next step? Notice that 6 minus x is very similar to x minus 6, which means you know what to do. We need to take out a negative 1. So that negative x will become positive x, and positive 6 will change into negative 6. So now at this point, we can cancel x minus 6. x minus 6 divided by itself is equal to 1. And that 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So now we're left over with the limit as x approaches 6 with a negative 1 on top, divided by 3 square root x plus 3 times 3 plus the square root of x plus 3. Now we can use substitution. So this is equal to negative 1 divided by 3 times the square root of 6 plus 3 times 3 plus the square root of 6 plus 3. Now 6 plus 3 is equal to 9. And we know what the square root of 9 is equal to. That's equal to 3. So we got 3 times 3, and then 3 plus 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 plus 3 is 6. 9 times 6 is equal to 54. So that is our final answer. Negative 1 divided by 54. Now let's confirm our answer of negative 1 divided by 54. Let's get the decimal value of that number. If you type it in your calculator, it's about negative 0 0.0185, and then it repeats 185 and so forth. Now, our original problem was this. The limit as x approaches 6 of 1 over the square root of x plus 3 
minus 1 over 3 divided by x minus 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in a number that is very close to 6. Let's try 6.1 to begin with. So go ahead and type this in your calculator. You may wish to use parentheses. So I got negative point zero one eight three six so forth. So you can see it's close. But now let's try something closer, like six point zero one. Let's see if it gets closer to our answer. So I got negative point zero one eight five zero three. As you can see, this answer is very close to the actual answer, which means that this is correct. As x gets closer and closer to six, it's going to approach this number. So you can always use direct substitution to confirm your answer, as long as you plug in a number that's very, very close to this number.